like I would be a pretty good meat cutting talk show personality. It would be the same thing all the time. Oh look, a steak. Uh, here's another steak. This is the Boston. It's their tricep muscle here. This makes a really nice roast. It's really hard to mess it up. Just stick it in your crock pot and leave it all day and come back later. I think it's one of the most underrated roasts. It really is. I am going to turn it into some ranch steak today because that's just more information for the world. Is there another name for the Boston? Cut it with the bone in for a round one shoulder roast. Round bone shoulder. The rump is on the other end of the cow. Okay. This is the center of the Boston here. You can see the grain here. Wherever you can see that, you want to cut at a 90 degree angle to that to make it more tender. This is a ranch steak. These are the ribs that came from the underside of the brisket. We got a pretty popular cut a tomahawk short rib. I used to be able to get two. And then something changed, or the way I did it changed, because I stopped being able to get two, and now I only get one. I don't know. If universally, the beef just all decided to change. That's probably not it. I think that's probably it. <laughs> yes, cowspiracy. I like that. That was nice. And then roll her back up. Throw a string on it. Tomahawk short rib. Take off the feather bones, and there's a tendon in here. Tendons don't make good meat. Not usually, unless you need a toothpick for later. That tendon that I just pulled out runs through the chuck here. And when you get a stiff neck, like you wake up in the morning, your neck's all stiff. That's the tendon that is acting up on you. Okay, so this is the rib. There's seven ribs. The bigger end is called the king end. The smaller end is called the queen end. The smaller end is actually the nicest end. If you were gonna save this as a roast, I would just pull out this little piece of scapula here, and then I would come along here and loosen all these up. When I do it on prime rib, I like to loosen bones and then tie them back down so that after cooking, they just flop right off. So this is like your prime rib. You'd start on the saw and just start cutting, and this would be bone-in rib steaks. Or you can take this off all the way. Now it's boneless for your ribeye steaks, your boneless rib roast that you can get your ribeye steaks from. These are one of your high dollar steaks. The Monaco's are ribeye. Recently changed to calling them ribeyes because I got a lot of heat for calling them Delmonico's. In other parts of the world, Delmonico's are something different. Probably actually in everywhere else in the world other than here. This little cap piece on the rib is a super tender piece of meat. If I took this on a saw and just cut inch and a half slices, that's like your standard pot roast. I'm gonna break it down now. I'll show you the smaller steaks. The chuck is what I did. I did blindfolded that time. That uh, could go viral on YouTube, especially if you cut your finger. <laughs> on a general day in and day out basis, I try not to do that. But you did once. Okay. Only once. We talked about that in the last video. I'm just pulling off the backbone right now. I'm just getting dead the nub. Dead the nub is on this finger. Yeah. But is that the most interesting thing about me at this moment? So there's that tendon, I'm gonna pull that out again. Do you need an autobiography of my credentials or? Yes. <laughs> Chuck eyes, there's four or five really nice ones from the rib end. These are the Chuck eye steaks. Also called poor man's Delmonico. The rest of this makes a really nice roast. It's gonna fall apart once you're done cooking it. I put it in the crock pot. Season it up, throw it in there, pour some leftover coffee on it. Chug eye roast. This is hamburger? No. No, no not hamburger. Uh, yeah. Denver. This is the Denver in the rough. And you got this little fella. Vienna. Rhode Island is not a city. Chicago. No. Vietnam. Vegas. Yes, Vegas there you go. Well, I've always called this the Vegas strip steak. I was out in Sacramento earlier this summer and they 
they called it the Tahoe Tender in a meat shop out there. Oh, bag of strip steak. We're on the second most tender cut of the cow, the flat irons, also called the infraspinatus, if you are muscle oriented. Flat iron. There's two in there separated by tendon. Eh, it's not really tendon. It's more like a fascia. You can see it right there. That's just not going to eat well. You have to eat around it. Denver is here on this side of it, so, so I gotta get down and get some of these top muscles off. Okay, so this is the Denver. We've almost got it done. Get the grains are, one's going this way and one's kind of going this way. So I separate these two pieces and then we can cut across the grain on each one. Denver steak, until it's just gonna pull right apart. This right here is the tenderloin for the saw. You can cut your steaks, you get sirloin steaks. Then once you pass the hip, you're gonna get porterhouses where your tenderloin's still full. Down here, where your tenderloin is getting smaller, these are your T-bone steaks. I'm going to bone this out. Okay. These are your New York strip steaks. Okay, look, there's our wrapper. She said she's wearing Dockers. You look like Dockers. Oh. <laughs> That's a big New York strip. You're a big New York strip. That's the biggest thing I've ever seen. New York yeah. strip steak. This is the tenderloin. What's the shiny stuff on the tenderloin? This? Yeah. Just a fascia covering that we're going to take it off. It would cook up pretty hard. Sirloin, where we get our pulaw steaks. And our boneless sirloins. Which are your favorite cup. Yes. They're not like the most tender ever, but they have a really good flavor. You stick them in your cast iron pan with some butter. That's where it's at. This cap here is the kulak. If you did separate the kulak from the sirloin, would it be like a cap on the sirloin? Yes. It would be a good part of the steak, but kulaks are good on their own, and it makes the sirloins a little smaller. All the sirloins, petite sirloins, and these kulaks, these are the real supermodels. If there was a meat cutters magazine, these would probably be in the center fold. Is they're pretty? Yep, they're pretty, they taste good, they're soft, but don't overcook them. You don't want to overcook anything, let's be honest. Oh yeah. Bam. Kulak. Right there. That's pretty much all you really need to see. The cool stuff, anyway. Uh, the round is left over here. We'll do that later. Save the top round. I eat a lot of burger from this, so it's not really that exciting. That's pretty much it. There we go. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure if you're not subscribed yet, you hit the subscribe button. I had someone ask me the other day if subscribing costs money, and the answer is no. You just have to make a YouTube account. Oh, make sure you support your local butcher. That's where you get the freshest, best quality meat. We'll see you next time.